Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Deganji reporting for the Media Speaks, and it looks like I just fired Google. I need to know what you, you watching this, how do you like this format? If you don't like it, then I'll go ahead and go to something else. I'll find a better format. But I've had it with Google. I'm sick up to my eyebrows with Google. And I found a new place. I don't, I'm sure it probably comes up on the screen. But it is meetings.io. And if you guys like it, it is very likely going to be the new uh, hosting site uh, for the live show. Uh, for those of you that uh, may not be able to see this video screen now live, we'll have to see if there's another way to change the aspect ratio. But the show is also posted on youtube.com slash the correct views, where I still have to submit to Google, I guess, grudgingly to some point. Um, but, I, I, you know, you can see all the videos and graphics and everything, but most of the people that watch me live, it's 4 or 1 in the morning in Canton, Ohio, where I'm at. So you want news, you're not worried about the graphics. Right now, I just got a uh, Correct Views logo up anyway, because I've been very busy firing Google. A little show just fired a corporation. Uh, Infowars.com, Steve Watson. Christmas wins out. The ban on religious school poster overturned following media attention. This is wonderful news, and I've gotten a lot of stories about the war on Christmas. Before I get into this, let me, uh, let me go to the reason you guys watch the correct views, that, that cut to the chase, to hear, uh, to hear whatever insight on it maybe you hadn't thought of prior. The government is not allowed to endorse a religion. By that, it cannot say that you have to be Christian, that you have to be Catholic that you have to be Muslim. <laughs> However, endorsing and allowing the display of are two entirely different things. I've been asked what I think of the Satanists that want uh, a display to prove a point. Let's face it, we've had to let the KKK march even though they're despicable kind of have to let the Satanists do this, and that's where you have to be a good parent. Plain and simple. Point is, the government cannot endorse Satanism either. But this attack, and when I say the war on Christmas, I mean the fact that you cannot display any kind of Christmas anything. The happy holiday crowd, if you will. I'm sorry, I'm not offended if you say happy Hanukkah to me, and I'm not Jewish. You can wish me a happy Kwanzaa. I only half even know what it is. You know what? I'm going to take it and smile. Because it was probably said in kindness. Uh, Infowars.com, Steve Watson. A school in Minnesota has backed down and agreed to overturn a ban on Christmas poster designed by a student that was originally deemed to be potentially too religious. He's got Jack Skellington on it. And there's a ribbon that looks like a cross. Gotta stop that. Would they have stopped it if it was a half moon? Would they have stopped it if he turned it upside down and it was an inverted cross? As we reported last week, the PAC Charter School prohibited students from displaying the poster despite the fact that it contained no recognizable religious Im imagery. Indeed, the only notable features on the poster are a Christmas tree, the words Merry Christmas, and the depiction of the Jack Skellington character from Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Nevertheless, school administrators claim that under the First Amendment, the establishment of religion by a state authority is prohibited, and therefore they had no choice but to ban the display of the poster, which was intended to advertise school yearbooks. Well, if you don't want my Christmas money, then maybe you won't buy a yearbook at all. After much media attention, however, the... And a campaign by Virginia-based rights group, these guys are heroes, the Rutherford Institute. The executive director of the school reversed the decision and has agreed to allow students to display the poster in the hallway of the school building. <coughs> Political correctness should never trump the First Amendment, said John W. Whitehead, president of the Rutherford Institute. Schools... Government officials and businesses have an opportunity <clears throat> to take the high road 
and not be relegated to playing the Grinch this Christmas. We're hopeful that other schools <clears throat> and workplaces will follow this Minnesota schools example by creating an environment where the First Amendment can flourish, Whitehead added. In an effort to further educate school officials on what is constitutionally acceptable as far as celebration of Christmas is concerned, the group has produced the guidelines entitled The Twelve Rules of Christmas, Christmas which we will be getting to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip the part that references it, because we're going to get to it in a minute. Um, and it mentions, uh, in one case, the schools were asked in, uh, this was another incident, asked to design a holiday card to send to the troops, but were told they were absolutely uh, forbidden to use the words Merry Christmas on them. Um, in other cases, nativity displays, Christmas carols, Christmas trees, wreath candy, candy canes, and even the colors red and green were banned. So, the Rutherford Institute. Let's see what the 12 rules of Christmas are. Public school students, written or spoken, personal expressions concerning the religious significance of Christmas, such as t-shirts that say Jesus is the reason for the season, may not be censored by school officials, absent evidence that the speech would cause a substantial disruption. Two, so long as the teachers are generally permitted to wear clothing or jewelry or pers have personal items expressing their views about the holidays, the Rutherford Institute says Christian teachers may not be prohibited from similarly expressing their views by wearing Christmas-related clothing or jewelry or carrying Christmas-related personal items. Three, public schools may teach students about the Christmas holiday, including its religious significance, so long as it is taught objectively for secular purposes such as its historical or cultural importance and not for the purpose of promoting Christianity. Four, public school teachers may send Christmas cards to the families of their students so long as they do it on their own time and on their own hours. Five, public schools may include Christmas music including those with religious themes in their choral programs if the songs are included for a secular purpose, such as their musical quality or cultural value, or if the songs are part of an overall performance, including other holiday songs relating to Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and other similar holidays. Public schools may not require students to sing Christmas songs whose messages conflict with that student's own religious or non-religious beliefs. And as a Christian, I completely support that. If you don't want to sing Christmas carols, you in no way, shape, matter, or form should ever be coerced into doing it. I'm not going to sing songs outside of my religion, and I do not blame you for not doing it either. I'm happy that was included. Um, seven, public school students may not be prohibited from distributing literature to fellow students concerning the Christmas holiday or invitation to church Christmas events on the same terms that they have be allowed to distribute other literature that is not related to schoolwork. Fair to me. Uh, there's a four more. Private citizens or groups may display creatures or other Christmas symbols in public parks, subject to the same reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions that would apply to other similar displays. Government entities may erect and maintain celebration of the Christmas holiday such as Christmas trees and Christmas light displays, and may include creatures in their displays at least so long as the purpose for including the creature is not to promote its religious content and is placed in context with <clears throat> other symbols of the holiday season as part of an effort to celebrate the public Christmas holiday through its traditional symbols. Three more. Neither public nor private employers may prevent employees from decorating their offices for Christmas, playing Christmas music, <clears throat> or wearing clothing related to Christmas merely because their religious content, so long as these activities are not used to harass or intimidate others. Public or private employees who sincerely held religious belief require that they not work on Christmas must be reasonably accommodated by their employers unless granting the accommodation would impose an undue hardship on the employer. Last, maybe most importantly, 12. Government recognition of Christmas as a public holiday and granting government employees a paid holiday for Christmas does not violate the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment.
They are not endorsing the religion, they are giving you a day off. You welcome to worship the mighty mouse men that live on the moon made on the green cheese if you want. Um, guys, I've got a couple more stories on the War on Christmas update for this year. Uh, there might be uh, some more dribbling in as the season goes on, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> BizPackReview.com County orders California neighborhood to take Christmas lights down. Refuse, that's what I say. A California County's Public Works Department ordered homeowners in a small neighborhood known for its elaborate Christmas light displays that they're going to have to pull the plug because they're in violation of county code. Screw county code. A county code is not allowed to trump your basic rights. The estimated 15 to 20 homeowners who received the letter are scratching their heads given that the holiday tradition has gone without complaint for about five years, according to KTLA Channel 5 News. It says we're in violation of a county ordinance that we're not quite sure of, said resident Brian Kopiak. He said it to KTAL. KTLAL, an eye chart. When we bought the house, the people that sold it to us told us what a great neighborhood it was, and they actually warned us that this neighborhood goes great at Christmas. God forbid you would do that in the land of the free, in the home of the brave. The letter gave residents until Wednesday to turn the lights off. I'd give them the one-finger salute. That'd be their Christmas gift. I think it's actually horrible that they're doing this to us, Kopiak said. All the poor, and the poor kids, they love the holiday display, and it literally brings the neighborhood together. One more nail in Christmas's coffin to watch the KTLA News report. Try to shut my Christmas lights off and see what happens. I don't suggest it. Um, Vigilant Citizen, the Kardashian 2013 Christmas card. A tribute to the Illuminati entertainment industry. This is today's dunce cap of the day. The dunce of the day. Uh, they don't get a dunce cap. No, nope, that only happens once a month. But the Kardashians do win the dunce of the day. If there was an award for the less Christmassy Christmas card in the history of the world, I believe that the Kardashian 2013 Christmas card would take the prize. Shot by elite fashion photographer David LaPatchbell, the card is a rather grim and depressing summation of the entertainment world, an industry ruled by a shadowy elite that is turning popular culture into toxic wasteland, <clears throat> populated with fascist, vaucous celebs such as the Kardashians. Um, and again, I've said this on this show a million times. I have two problems with hip hop, R and B, and uh, top forty. For I have two problems. One, vocal running sucks. That is not singing. That is noise. Second of all, I don't have a problem with someone like Marilyn Manson who says I am satanic. Out there, it is what it is. This shadowy, oh, we're Illuminati, we're so cool, we're so much smarter than you. All of this is paid for by the elite to make money at the very least, uh, to bring up evil at the very worst. And it all hides the fact that there's no talent there. I'm not saying you have to be a great musician in order to be listened to. I like Skrillex. You know what? Skrillex isn't a great musician, he's a great producer. Kanye West is not a great producer, he is not a great rapper, and it takes absolutely no talent to do what he does. So things like this, uh, hide all of that and create drama. I was going to put pictures of it up. I type in Kardashian Christmas card, you can see it, you can get a vomit bucket beside you. The wide panoramic card is filled with symbolism and references describing everything that the Illuminati entertainment industry is about. The shot takes place in an abandoned movie theater, one that appears destroyed and vandalized. Um, uh, Kim Kardashian, she's in a revealing outfit. She's pretty. She's not all that pretty. I don't really get it. Her curves are the main reason why her entire family is known right now. There's a dollar sign next to her. Uh, the Jenner sisters, uh, they have two Illuminati pyramids beside them, complete with the all-seeing eye. Um, there's all kinds of mind control references. If you don't know what that is, uh, look up MK Ultra. Uh, just read it on Wikipedia. You'll, you'll be grossed out that these people love this kind of thing. Again, and if it was done as a show, if it was like, 
An example, I'm in Chem Raised, and it's a band that hasn't debuted yet, but it's taking place in a fictional post-apocalyptic world. Okay, it's taking place in a fake world. So there's lyrics in there about monsters, people being nuked, diseases that don't exist, all kinds of really cre creepy, quote-unquote, spooky stuff. None of it's real. We're writing a horror fantasy post-apocalyptic Mad Max music. That's what we're doing. I don't have a problem with that. I also don't have a problem with idiots like Deicide that want to burn inverted crosses into their heads. You're honest about who you are. It's the land of the free, the home of the brave. I'm a Christian. I'm not God. You can do whatever you want. And I support your right to do it. However, this, oh, let's just be so mysterious, makes me want to puke. Um, Kylie, whoever that is, wears a vulva-shaped headdress, making her look like a high priestess. <clears throat> the sisters stand on a pile of uh, the tabloid magazines. Kanye is depicted as Jesus on the cover of Rolling Stone. Yeah, he is the Jesus, what uh, Hitler was to the Jews. Khloe uh, Kardashian is posed sitting in the back seat of a car, and uh, Courtney's son Mason, whoever that idiot is, lays on it. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a Christmas card that has nothing to do with Christmas. It has to do with the promotion of the Kardashians and their desire to use their brainless, talentless family to try to sell some more of anything to make money. Uh, it, that is your dunce of the day. Friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. When you do, go to the $5 Wallet Savers. Why? Because you probably don't have a million dollars because you've been Christmas shopping. You've been trying to buy the Kardashian card. Good Lord, I hope not. Guys, click on the $5 Wallet Savers and uh, do you know I always say this? Do you know anybody that owns a piece of garbage car? Somebody that might break down in the middle of the winter. Now, for you guys in Florida, chilling in the palm tree and the corona, and fast forward five minutes if you want to. The rest of you living in the land of ice and snow like I am, <clears throat> there is a survival blanket in here for $1.99. It's an emergency survival sleeping blanket. Anybody ever waited for a half hour, maybe an hour and a half, in freezing sub-zero weather for a tow truck? Because I have. Um, if someone's sickly or elderly or if they've got a baby, this could be a real life or death matter. And for $1.99, you can make sure that that person's going to be fine. Um, $2.99, the three LED Dynamo hand crank flashlight. It doesn't run on batteries, so you don't have to worry about forgetting them like I always do. And acid dripping in there and it's ruined. Crank it, it works every time. Uh, lastly, um, the, the 11 function credit card survival tool, it's $1.99. To look that up, that's one of the most interesting devices I've ever seen. Friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. I've got, three more, I've got two more stories for you. America and Israel created a monster computer virus with now th which now threatens nuclear reactors worldwide. Washington's blog, Timber, Washington's blog. Um, in their obsession to stop Iran from developing nuclear weapons, the U.S. and Israel created a computer virus called Stuxnet to take care of Iran's nuclear reactors. The virus appears to have spread to other countries. One of the world's top computer security experts, Eugene Kapersky, said this week that the virus had attacked a Russian nuclear reactor. That's why you shouldn't build nuclear reactors! Say no to nuclear power! One of the, uh, the infamous Stuxnet malware thought to have been developed by Israel and to disrupt, uh, by the U.S. and Israel to disrupt Iran's nuclear facilities also managed to cause chaos at a Russian nuclear plant, according to Eugene Kapersky. Well, the Iranians are stupid, too. I predicted that there was going to be extreme seismic activity where that nuclear power plant is being built, and I used that as an explanation to why you do not want it happening. We already know that the earthquake caused the meltdown at Fukushima, not the ensuing tidal wave. So Iran wants to build a nuclear power plant in one of the most seismically, seismically active regions right now. And I, mean, I got all kinds of hate for it. You, you, you're terrible when they should be allowed to have one in nuclear power. 
you know what, they had an earthquake there. And they're going to have more. And it's going to be a disaster. The revelation came during a question and answer session after a speech at Australia's National Press Club last week in which he argued that those spooks responsible for offensive technologies don't realize the unintended consequences of releasing malware into the wild. Everything you do is a boomerang, he added. It will get back to you. Good, shut your nuclear power plant down, bonehead. Unfortunately, it's very possible that other nations which are not in conflict will be victims of the cyber attacks on critical infrastructure, he said. In cyberspace, there are no borders, and many facilities share the same systems. Not finished there, Kapersky also claimed to have heard from Russian space guys in the know that even machines on the International Space Station have been infected from time to time after scientists arrived aboard with infected USBs. Let's stop. Do you want to know why my brother's studio computer will never, ever, ever get a virus? Why? Because we format any hard drive that is going to be installed into the computer, which means it's automatically empty. Anything you put on the computer will come from a computer that never goes online. Do you see how easy that is? You never put anything in it that already has data on it, and therefore nobody could have put a virus on the U.S. The fact that they are allowing the internet to come in contact with the computer that runs a nuclear power plant is a sign of one of two things. That they don't know the basics of computer intelligence and they should not have a nuclear power plant open. Or, for technical reasons, they absolutely have to be do that. In which case, you shouldn't have a nuclear power plant since it's going to melt down and affect the lives of untold millions of people for millions of years, which is what plutonium and uranium do, which come out of these things. Look it up. I'm not making it up. Close the nuclear power plants down. Especially when you look at China Gate and you find that uh, man-made global warming is a lie. I still want somebody to put a house meat behind that. Also, for those of you that use credit cards, I'm going to give you a free idea. Go on Craigslist, go on eBay, go on somewhere and get a cheap $50 computer. Get a $25 computer. Get a piece of garbage that has notepad. Anything that you can type on, that is all that you need. Type your credit card information into the notepad on the computer that you will never put online that you bought for $25 on Craigslist. Put that notepad document onto your jump drive and then put the jump drive into your computer. When a site wants your credit card information, never ever type your credit card information on the computer that goes online. Rather, Cut and paste the numbers from the jump drive that you got from the computer that never goes online and paste the numbers into the box that wants your credit card. It will be a secured server if it's got a little lock. If you don't see a little gold lock, it's not secure. Don't put your credit card in it. Paste the numbers in because many, many viruses get your information by sn uh, keyboard sniffers. They see what you type, and they know what a credit card number looks like because of the order of the numbers, and they take your credit card information. And they cannot do that if you do not type it into your computer. And if you do what I just told you to do, shazam, Sparky. That's why you listen to the correct views. I'm going to go on. Other security experts agree my set has now fallen to the ground. Um, as British security website V3 in an article entitled Stuxnet UK and US power plants at risk as malware spreads outside Russia reports 
Experts from FireEye, it is a source, and F-Secure, another source, told V3 the nature of Stuxnet means it is likely many power plants have fallen victim to malware, which is why they should shut them down. F-Secure security analysis Sean Sullivan told V3 Stuxnet's unpredictable nature means it is likely spread to other facilities outside the, men the plant mentioned by Kropinski, which is why you should shut them down. It didn't spread via the internet, it spread outside of its target due to a bug, and so it started traveling via USB. I told you how to solve that. Given the community targeted, I would not be surprised if other communities had nuclear power plants with infected PCs. Why would you bring a jump drive up? All you gotta do is a simple cut and paste. If it's a computer program, that you, it's not that hard to keep the internet away from the jump drive that's going to the space station! Director of Security Strategy at FireEye, Jason Steer, mirrored Sullivan's sentiment, adding the insecure nature of most critical infrastructure systems would make them an ideal breeding ground for Stuxnet, which is why you should shut the plants down. It also says uh, the use of XP in power plants is set to become even more dangerous, as Microsoft has confirmed it will officially cut support for the 12-year-old operating system in less than a year. However, of course, you know, nobody at Microsoft would bother to update the system so that a plant wouldn't melt down. Because nobody's able to think of that. Like, I'm a genius. I, I'm some genius that somehow I know that there's enough people at Microsoft that if you paid them to do this, they'd leave Microsoft and do it. And you know what? Microsoft would probably help them so that they don't have to live in a meltdown America. And all the Kenray songs, in which case, would be real. Boneheads, idiots, stupid freaking people make me sick. Use the thinking part of your brain. It says it's highly likely that other plants globally are infected and will continue to be infected as it's in the wild and we will see it on a weekly basis. Business is trying to figure out how to secure the risk infected USB flash drives. I just told you how to do it. The last story of the night, the Washington Post, please make sure that that segment of the show gets to people that run nuclear power plants. Make sure it gets to Kropinski. Can somebody listening do that? I know you can. Uh, Washington Post, Reed, wrong, Mr. Wrong Reed. His first name is wrong, his last name is Reed. Reed, wrong again. And Democrats trigger nuclear option, eliminate most filibusters on nominees. What a jerk. The absolute death of the nation, right before our very eyes. Senate Democrats took the dramatic step Thursday of eliminating filibusters for most nominations by presidents, a power that they said was necessary to fix a broken system, but one that Republicans said that they will only rupture it further. In this instance, the Republicans are correct. Democrats used a rare para, a mil, a, pa, parliamentary move to change the rules so that the federal judicial nominees and executive office opponents can advance to confirmation votes by a simple majority of senators rather than the 60-vote supermajority that has been the standard for nearly four decades. Oh, Hitler consolidated power too. The immediate rationale for the move was to allow the confirmation of three picks by President Obama to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District Columbia Circuit. The most recent examples of what Democrats have long considered unreasonably partisan obstruction by Republicans. Of course, they did, you know, they did the same thing to Bush. They, they didn't even let one of his female nominees speak. Uh, and she was fine. You know, they, they, they destroyed her for no reason at all because she wasn't an elitist. In the long term, the rule change represents a substantial power shift in a chamber that for more than two centuries had prided itself on affording more rights to the minority party than any other legislative body in the world. Now a president whose party holds the majority in the Senate is virtually assured of having his nominees approved with far less opportunity for political obstruction. Well, if you are in favor of that, do remember that when the Republicans get in office that they're going to do the same thing to you Democrats. That is why it was written so that you couldn't do that, because what you were doing is making the president and the entire branch way stronger than it's supposed to be. Reid said the chamber must evolve beyond parliamentary roadblocks. The American people believe the Senate is broken. No, they believe the senators are broken. And I believe the American people are right. That's because you're a bonehead, he said, not knowing what the American people even believe. It's time to get a Senate working again. Yeah, no, it's time to get uh, fascism and uh, cronyism working. Uh, McConnell linked the rule change to the methods used to approve Obama health care law solely with Democratic votes. 
The normally reserved GOP leader paced at his desk during his speech, often turning his back to Democrats to address only his fellow Republicans. In this instance, the only people that were using the thinking parts of their brain. It's a sad day in history uh, for the Senate, McConnell told reporters, calling the move a Democratic power grab. There were a lot of words warning of how bad Hitler was from people in the administration. And they just blew him off, like this is going to happen here. It's one more step. It's happened before, people. And forget Hitler, look up Stalin. The clash ended with a vote nearly as partisan as the Times, 52 to 48, with all but three Democrats backing the move and every Republican opposing it. The vote was the culmination of more than 25 years of feuding over nominations, beginning with President Ronald Reagan's choices for the Supreme Court and including Obama's picks for obscure federal regulatory agencies. Each side in Thursday's debate cited its own statistics to state its case. Basically, filibusters have always been used to prevent a level of government from having more leverage than the other. This is another step towards turning the president into a dictator by making sure that if he has the ruling party, they can just rule like a party of dictators, uh, pretty much kissing the ring of the president. And uh, would you have liked Bush to have had this? Because I would not have. And if we get another Bush in office, he's going to have that now. Guys, that's a nightmare. Um, friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I beating Angie reporting for the Media Speaks as his set betrays him behind him. Um, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K. Also, if you're in Canton, Ohio, make sure you go to the Arcadia Grill, because some of the best food that I have ever eaten is food that I have eaten, in fact, at the Arcadia Grill. So make sure you go, friends. Thank you for all that you do. Um, if you can donate to me, please go to uh, the correct views of Hotmail.com, because every penny that you give me does in fact go to a better show. And uh, lastly, <clears throat> make sure you let me know what you think of uh, the way I think that I have fired at Google. Thank you, friends. Good night and God bless.